give me Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says I will stand at my guard post and station myself on the lookout tower I will watch to see what he will say to me what do you watch to see what do God's watchmen watch to see what God will say oh God I'm putting this one in your brain today you must sit there because all my life I understood that when you go to watch you're going there watch night is to do what oh dear God are you still my friends have I told you for years that talking to God is not your main job why what are you saying he didn't know what are you saying all my life prayer is the key prayer is the key my version prayer is the my Key. Nobody's in Jacob for me. Okay. Jesus started. When? When? I'm, I'm just asking. I'm serious. Please. No, no. I might be wrong. Every day I'm fine. When? When? Luke 4. That was when he started. Huh? Oh, aha. I was thinking about thank you. You have found it for me. Okay. Is that the first time we hear about Jesus? What's the first time we hear about him apart from when he was born? 12 years old at the temple. What was he doing? He was in a prayer meeting. What was he doing? What was Jesus doing the first time you hear about him apart from being a baby? In the midst of doctors, authorities in scripture, and he's discussing scripture. And he said, I must be about my father's business. What was he referring to as his father's business? Okay, when he was in that wilderness, according to us, praying, how was he praying? What are the prayers he said? Quote part of the prayers he said. Quote the prayer Jesus prayed in the wilderness. One, two, go. The first one, just say part. Say now. He didn't start like that. He didn't start with man shall not live by bread. So, to pray effectively, you must know no thank you someone here said what i like to pray effectively you must know the second prayer he prayed that is written sorry that is written down how did he say it again it is written the third prayer how did it begin please explain to me how you can pray without knowing what is written and that's what i said at the beginning that's the greatest problem i personally carry on my heart sometimes i almost feel guilty because everybody seems to say that it's just prayer that is the solution. And for so long, the Holy Ghost has taught me for 20 years that it is knowledge of the word that is the main thing. You can't even pray according to the will of God. John chapter 5, 1 John 5. What does it say? For this, oh yeah, is a confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him now that's why my memory verses if you're new learn the memory verse you know the verse that's why we do memory verses <coughs> get the audios we have them on your phone go and play them sing them along you know it <coughs> it says if we ask according to his will so you must know his will to pray effectively as long as you don't know his will you know why the churches of god around the world cannot know his will because they go for church meetings and preach for 30 minutes they spend 45 minutes it's a long sermon one hour Kai, he preached for one and a half hours i don't die two hours now waiting now that person that waiting three hours for for what now what is he saying like one white man said why can't you just preach like jesus look at the bible just a short story <laughs> What, what does he have to say now? No, 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 no. You don't say much. You just say it or the people will be tired. The people will be tired. The first time Jesus got missing, they, how many days? Bible study. How old was he? How many days of Bible study? Check your brain. Oh yeah, the one retreat, we are sure. 5,000 men were there. We don't know the women and children. How long did it last? Three. When did the feeding come? Did they announce prayer and fasting there? Did you even hear of any prayer? The Bible tells you he taught them three days. Three. He gave them food so they won't faint as before they get home. The Bible tells you so. 
So any spirit that tells you in your ear, this is not the will of God to spend this long. It's not the spirit of God. Because every time people have come out with knowledge and power, even the people that are very big on prayer, what you don't know, many people don't know. You listen to Prophet Sadu Selvaraj. He talks about prayer a lot, yes? Have you seen his books? That came out of prayer or it came from Bible study. Do you do you have any idea? Do you think he studies the Bible? Yes, sir. Do you think he studies it well? Well, maybe maybe one or two hours. You don't think he probably studies the Bible far more than me at this point in my life. But every time he refers, I went aside, he says I was praying. Better receive understanding. Someone will be saying, I pray. You pray. Every time you pray, you come up with these endless points from scripture. Define prayer. When those people say pray, they mean prayer with study. They, they sit for hours with their Bible. They are not praying throughout. When they say pray, the prayer is Bible study and all mixed in. Oh, don't make me open the Bible now. Look how you're looking at me. Now I have to open that scripture. Don't be looking at me when I say something. Be agreeing. Agree. I've told you long ago. You have to agree with me. Are you Christians? When you look at me like that, it makes me go like, oh, they don't believe. They don't believe. I was just sharing something with Matthew at the end of the day. What's that passage? Open it. Exodus chapter 30. Uh, who was talking? Are you there too in the spirit? <laughs> ah, yeah, Exodus 30. All right, I'm going to read just a tiny part of it. You read verse um, 7 and 8. Everybody, look. Aaron, the high priest, must burn fragrant incense on it. On what? The altar of incense. He must burn it every morning when he tends the lamps. Stop! He must burn incense. What does incense represent? Psalm 141 verse 2 says, Let the lifting of our hands be like the evening sacrifice. It's prayer. But when is he burning this incense, making this prayer? While he's doing what? Which lamp? What is the lamp? Because you go zoom right past. You think that the lamp, the incense is burning on the lamp. No! The lamp is a lampstand. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The seven pronged golden lampstand, which represents the word of God. While he is tending the lamps, his word, while he is in the word, what is he doing? He's offering prayer. Are you seeing how it works? <laughs> That's the only way to pray. You are in the word. You're tending the lamps. How do you tend the lamps? You remove the suit. That the, anyone ever use candle or lantern, bush lantern? Did you ever? Yeah. You know that there's a way it can be, and the flame is affected and it's not burning well. Yeah. So you bring out that wick, or even the other bush, you know, fabricated tin with the cover, and you clean the wick. You may off it. You just break off the sooty part. Uh huh. You pull it out a bit. You, you. I mean, you put it in shape. Tighten it, then you light the fire, and the flame is clear. That's what we go to scriptures for to see better, to create clearer light. Now, it is where we come to tend our light. I want to understand better. This passage, Pastor was saying the other day, this thing I was reading, I was thinking that the Holy Ghost was bringing to my mind, or that someone mentioned, I want to check what does the Bible really say about this matter. And you're you going, you are tending your lamps. Are you understanding? The more what better tended your lamps are, the clearer the light it emits. That's what you're doing. And as you're doing this, you must be burning fragrant incense as you're seeing. And then you go, oh, Father God, thank you for your word. Father, I'm asking in line with this. You're offering incense while tending your lamps. Verse 8, let me just, let's just finish. When Aaron sets up the lamps at twilight, this, the other one was early, this later. He must burn incense. Are you saying? Are, are you saying how, how they work? Lamp and incense. The word and prayer. They go together. But when you have people, <laughs> hey, see the bag of incense material they come dragging in. They come in around nine o'clock in the evening. Baka. Oh yeah, rent that altar well. Hold them, eh? We go pass, give you. We go just the put them, eh? Till morning. Brethren, we are here to pray. We are not here to play. Kuska, muska, muska. No tending of the lamp, 
Nobody knows what you're doing. You can't even see the direction. See the thick glass. See the thick smoke. Your incense has put everywhere. People are jamming people. Knee in the belly, solar plexus, leg in the back. Ah, who is that? Okay. Nobody understands because smoke, incense, 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 incense. No, there must be light in your smoke. When you enter the holy place, there was smoke, a haze created by the burning of the incense. It looked misty. <coughs> in that place, you could see with the light of scripture. So, why I am so big on scripture, and I actually am almost feeling guilty. I'm not praying enough, but don't worry, I'll pray this year. I'll pray a lot more by the grace of God. And because we must pray. We'll pray a lot more. But you know, you've seen the Holy Ghost hijack us as a group. I'm not talking about group prayer. I'm not bothered about this one. The Holy Ghost has hijacked us so many times and we prayed <laughs> 10 times longer than we planned to. It's not a problem. It's personally I am talking about. You must light. Learn to be, as you're reading the word sometimes, as something is stirred up, just start praying about it right then. Don't, be, don't make your work with God too, too mechanical. If God starts to stir up a prayer within you, that's what happens when as I'm reading the word. And then he stirs up something. And sometimes I don't put my hand on the page, I just pause and I start praying. Sometimes it goes on and I never get back to continue that study right then. Other times, I'll come back to it. That prayer may last for 10 minutes, 5, 10, 15, 30 minutes, uh, whatever. And then I come back and I continue. You know, I may not be stirred up to pray, but it's a mixture. When you set up the lamp at three lights, as evening is coming, it's get, get, getting that. Some say in, at the, in the evening, some translations. He must burn incense. There is to be an incense offering before the Lord throughout your generations. People, we must pray. That's not the discussion. Some people barely pray, but neither do they study the word. I want you to see that if you're truly studying the word, prayer will be coming out. They go hand in hand. True word will stir up prayer. True lamp light from the spirit of god will stir up prayers in you you will find yourself praying you'll be praying with understanding you'll be praying with illumination from god amen god is good to us we will not be drunk with wine but we will be filled with the holy ghost yes that's why ephesians 5 says habakkuk he said i will watch to see what he will say to me and what i should reply about my complaints people you don't just watch to see what god will say to you you also stand and collect what the reply oh god if you can understand you'll be jumping you literally come before god on the watchtower the primary way god speaks is through scripture his spirit will confirm it you may see visions you may have all sorts of other experiences when you're praying but as you look at his word you hear what you say but you don't just come there to hear what he's saying you also stand there and say so what should i do you make inquiry psalm 27 this one thing do i desire this i will seek after that i might dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life and inquire at his temple that's asking questions so you collect from him what will be your reply about your complaints not just to him but to the people 